All right, good morning and happy Monday. It's December 11th and I'm planning on doing the advent of code challenge for the day. So the 11th here, so I'll share my screen and we'll start jamming. All right, so the 11th is cosmic expansion. So keep checking time here and I'll use VS code for jamming here. Oops, advent code, 23, 11, cosmic expansion. Oops. Okay, so this guy open and it's 11.03. Start reading the problem statement. Okay. Okay, so it looks like all pairs sort is pass. Isn't it then? We only count each pair once, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so we can use Floyd Warshaw for all pairs short as pass. Okay, interesting. So let's look at the input. Let's see, it's 11.05. Look, right input. Okay, it's not too big. So anyhow, we'll take this input and we'll expand it, right? Each of these rows and columns. And then we should get the input uh, output value 374 is our target. All right, target. Uh, for part one is 374, and then this is our input. Stick that there. And then, so as we can expand the input, it's not terribly too big, so we should be able to just tie it in there. It doesn't necessarily need to be very efficient. Appending an additional row is pretty simple, but appending the additional columns with like shift everything over or do I want to do that either we shift it over or for reals or I wonder if we can shift it over and just count it as two for every step. Each of these steps is just two if you go up to down, or that sounds more complicated than it needs to be. All right, so the game plan will be this, right? Let's do this 11 or seven. Game plan is to right parse input line by line. 
and expand input, oops, input into the matrix A. So first we'll pre-process the input raw as is to determine which rows and columns are all blank. Then we expand it. Okay, so that sounds good. So implementation will begin at 11 out of eight. Oops, time to shine, here we go. So with open input as input for nine input. Oops. Okay, raw is this guy and then raw dot append line dot strip we don't want the new line character at the end and we'll have two maps for the row and the columns right row raw looks a lot like row so i'm thinking maybe Yeah, we'll just change it. No, no, I don't want that. I don't want to do this. I'm going to call this thing. I'll just call it text. How about just straight up just text? Just plain text. And then an array will be our parse text based upon the rows and columns, which are blank, that we need to double. Row and column. Will be a set each, right? So we should we can just do this. Let's do row equals each ith row. M and M and N. Number of rows and text and number of columns and text correspondingly. Set row for I and range M. H I throw if all text of I character equals a dot, right? So it's empty space for character in that text. So I column equals each jth column for J in range in if all characters equal to the dot for the character in the column. Oops, hold on, this is not right, All right? So For all I J for J and range in let's go like this. All right, Python's a little bit weird in that sometimes we range the latch other eyes left to right. <laughs> all right, so the ith column such that all jth values in that ith column are a dot. And this is the jth column for all on my right correspondingly in range M for C and text of I sub J. <clears throat> right, so the rows would be the ith rows, columns with the jth columns. And let's just print this to make sure my logic's correct, right? Just do some basic validation, right? Some basic checks to make sure things are looking good. Okay, so row three, seven, and we call them two, five, and eight, three, seven, zero, one, two, three. 
four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that looks good. Okay. And yeah, so next we're gonna say, okay, transform the text into the array. Okay, so for I and range N or J and range N. And then want to rewrite this as the Carnelli operate A since text I'm no longer used down here. And then we're basically going to transform it. So if all A sub I. Character equals dot for each character and each sub i. Right now, no, 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 we don't need to check this. We just say if i's in row, let's do this as a set then, rowable lookups. Similarly, this will be a set. Oh, one lookups, right? So if i is in row, a dot append. How big is this thing going to be? It's gonna be times two for each column. Maybe call this M and N. There's like little case. There's like the smaller versions so based on the raw input. M N N and M, and it'll do uppercase M and N for the other guy. I have a N. Okay, so M and N are based on M and N. M plus two times the cardinality of row. And then N is correspondingly N plus two times the cardinality of columns. Your A will be M and N rows and columns of dots. And again, this is where we read and write Python and backwards on the chart, right? Like right to left. <laughs> Bless me. <laughs> All right, so a dot for that, uh, okay. Let's do this print. Actually, no, we don't want to do this. We want to increment it based on Yeah, if, it, if it's a row or a column, then I wonder if I need to go slow to go fast here. It makes sense to just, and that's just a simple thing to do, you just put two. Right? It's all dots. So as we iterate, we'll just go two instead of one. All right, so we can't just do a simple for loop then. For i in range, I guess ij will map to u v above, right? Okay. UV, I'm not IJ. I'm 
which I threw. Let's make this more explicit, right? IJ would be here, UB is here. Right, we start at the top left for both. So, I mean, row by row, right? Should be okay. Why is less than lowercase m? Should be zero. Initially, if we go through that entire i row. Well, j. <clears throat> right, so. I don't necessarily need IG. Okay, so let's just do this for nine range and <clears throat> for chain range in in. Music. Just play music, you know, you have one job to do. Okay. If all the characters are equal to a dot for the character in a sim. No, 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 what am I doing, dude? If I is in a row, so u plus equals two one plus I in a row. Always to come out by one. So after we process the i throw, we go through every j column. So v is ephemeral here, right? We start back at every beginning, the end of this loop, one plus and J is in the column. If A sub I sub J is a galaxy or a common vertice, and there's some object, Oops, not, this is the text, right? The plain text. Then we set a sub u sub v to that corresponding guy. Okay, so four, row and text, print row. Do another print. Oops. And four row in the array a, print that row. Okay, let's just see, make sure this looks like that, right? Oops. It's out of range. Uh oh. I J M. Oops. It should be lowercase M and N for this guy. Corresponds to uppercase M and N for that guy. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. 
Let's do this so it looks a little easier to read. I join each string, right? Okay, I mean, that looks all right offhand, but let me see if I can stick it somewhere just real quick, just double check. All right, so basically, we start with this thing. Come on. Uh, okay. Really? Oh, okay. You decide to appear my, 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 my headphones real quick, huh? Oh, my gosh. The, the, the smarter technology it gets, it's like the stupider it becomes. It's like, okay, I have no idea why my computer all of a sudden decides to sync my, my AirPods while I'm listening to them on my phone. Holy cow. Okay, whatever. Let's see. So this guy should look like oops, that guy basically. Uh oh, that doesn't look right. Unless it's the, the before part. Oh, I didn't put the this thing, but that doesn't look right there. Yeah, I made them too big. Or, oh, did I make them too big? Maybe, yeah. So it's, is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten initially? And here it's, this one should be turned into, oh, oh, it's just plus one, not times two. Okay, so, oops, slight logic error. This guy is plus this guy. So for each one, we get just one additional one, right? Uh oh. Okay, I gotta count this out. Okay, let me actually just move this side by side real quick just to make sure it looks okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah. Okay, I mean that looks right, right? Looks good, okay, and then this is the output of the expanded thing. I think that looks good. Okay. So now we need to just do the all pair shortest pass. And then actually I have the code for that already written based on the algorithms eliminated. So let me just go there real quick. I'll show you all what I mean. So this is part of the uh, algorithm toolbox that I've, oops, not this one, but go to my GitHub profile and then go to algorithms eliminated. <laughs> so this is part of the algorithmic toolbox in that we can use these solutions, right? So here's the Floyd Warshaw algorithm. We don't need memory optimization, but we could use just, just this guy here, basically. I've got the key too. Got the key. Key for J, which I J edge of weight. Right, so. I have this guy. And stick you there. Okay, so I still need to take in the input. And actually, did they label these? I think they did. They labeled them one, two, left to right. Okay. For simplicity, we'll label them. Text. Call like a node starting at one. I think they started at one. Yeah. One. 
Let's just do this. Node. Oops, node would be this guy. Okay. Node's not used, but I just use. I want to use. They just count. Num. Num. Num plus equals one. I'm not going to top up a version. Okay. Uh oh. Oh, the number is not going to work actually for double digits, though, right? Yeah, we don't want that. Never no mind. Just keep it as a hash sign. We'll just know the different pairs. Okay, so our vertices would be the set. V is the set of I J for I in range. Oops. And for J in range in if A sub I sub J is equal to a hash sign. Make sure that's cool. Zero four, one, two, three, zero. Two one oh one two zero three four five six seven zero eleven zero Okay, and they all look like that they're offhand. Okay, so for The cost is the Manhattan distance. So we can do a breath first search for distance out to each other. If we do a breath for search outwards, then we don't need Floyd Marshall, right? This is kind of a kill. This is useful if we actually have the edges, right? Here, we have to drag the edges. Okay, so let's switch gears and let's just do BFS outwards from each node. That'll give us our shortest pass. Right. So let's further refine this. Form a BFS from each vertex, right? B. Given the, the oops. Given the set of vertices. And gosh, Peter, just. Just dying to be unhelpful. <laughs> okay, so where was I? Perform BFS from each vertex V, get in a set of vertices, right? Each vertex B, B, and B. B is the set of vertices, okay. All right, so this will give us the single source shortest pass. 
from V to each W, right? And then for each UV pair, we can keep track of the shortest path. This is like the best. It has to be all the shortest puns. The distance have a There. Let's do this. So we use a key as the function of j. So all right, it'll just format the string i j and then we'll create a map so distance will be our map. The best distance is for each edge of IJ. So let's initialize this then to infinity or some arbitrary value, right? This is initial state. E sub i sub j is mapped to infinity and some signal value. For i and h for j. Okay, so that's the initial distance. These are vertices and our distance. Oops, make sure this is cool. Key is not defined. What? Really? Want to stick it on a different line? Okay, so that's every edge pair. Well, actually, that's not right, is it? No, that's not right. Sort of vertices. Hold on. Vertex. Take it out. Vertex. Pair one and pair two. Let's let's fill this out uh, as we go. I think that'll make our lives easier. Resistance from here to there equals this, right? From here to there. How do I want to model that? Tools. Map of a map, maybe? So the key will be the starting vertex, and the key within that will be the ending vertex. Okay, let's do that. We use a default dictionary. Oops. Um, this is from here. 
Let's do that. Tuple can be entry into a map, isn't it? No, 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 tuple is unhashable type. Okay, so we can use, you know, we do want a key of a tuple then, right? And uh, tuple. Yeah, so these are just the coordinates, right, as a tuple. So that's good. And that's something we can hash. Name is a default dictionary. Object. I'm just create a map object, right? It should be okay. U and V or V and V. If U is equal to V, then distance is zero, isn't it? Distance is yourself. I don't care about the distance myself, right? I don't think so, yeah. Okay, so if u is different than b, then distance equals the absolute difference between i, j, and u, like the deltas, right? The absolute difference between u sub zero and b sub zero. What's the absolute difference between u sub one and b sub one? M sub u was a map, so it's a map of maps. M sub u sub v I wonder if we need the key here in this case. Looks like it's because it's distance. It's a distance from u to v. See if this comes out right. <laughs> so zero four to five eight zero one two three four five eight should be one two three four five and then one two three four should be nine. Okay, that was right. This guy to 11, 0 should be 15, right? So it's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, and that looks right. It's not an ephemeral value, we'll just put a little comment here. Man at 10 distance. Bird at to be that's cool.
Then we can just iterate through them. This is the HUV edge. Well, that's not right. 748, holy cow. Oh, I'm counting them as bidirectional edges then, right? I should be able to divide by two then. Right, it's bidirectional edges. Okay. It's kind of a hack, but I'm whatever, that works. Let's see. What happens for the actual input? Seems plausible. Yay, okay, that worked. 11.45 is accepted. 11.45. 11.45. This is start implementation. Implementation. All right. And detailed game plan. Oops, game plan plus start implementation. Implementation. Oops. And part one is accepted for the implementation. Implementation. Implementation in Python three. Python three. Oops. Which is accepted. Right? It's accepted. It's cool. It was accepted. Okay. So then we can read on to part two. Actually, the map is kind of overkill, right? So let's get rid of this map. We don't need this. Manhattan distance, right? And then divided by two since it's bidirectional edges. Oops. Which is bidirectional. Okay. So it's 11.46. Let's do this, start on part two. Problem statement. Okay. Well, okay, this is not feasible to add in a, a million, so. Wonder if there's a formula we can use then instead. So yeah, unfortunately, based on part two requirements, I, I need to rework some of this initial code. It's been about an hour though, so I'm gonna take a break. And I'll jam on part two later. 
to part two. Yeah, I need to really rework a lot of this logic because, you know, putting in one additional one is fine, but putting in a million different ones is not cool. But it's just Manhattan distance, though. So I'm pretty sure I can calculate it here. And yeah, I'll, I'll take a break and I'll look at it. I'll post it on my GitHub so hopefully it's helpful for someone. Worst case, it looks kind of cool. All right, catch you later.